Good morning. It's good to have you with us this morning, this seventh Sunday in the season of Easter and also Memorial Day weekend. We gather this morning to receive the gifts of God and we gather in the name that was first pronounced over us at our baptisms. We gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gospel lesson for this seventh Sunday in the season of Easter is from John 17, verses 1 to 11. Let's read. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. 
I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. This passage we just read from John 17 is referred to as the High Priestly Prayer. Jesus was praying for his disciples, including you and me, and he was praying at a critical moment. Later that night, Jesus was arrested. The next morning, he was crucified. So what did Jesus pray for when he was praying for you and me that night? Did Jesus simply pray that you and I would believe that he is who he said he is and that we would know the truth? Or did he pray that you'd recognize that faith in Christ works? It accomplishes the things you want accomplished in your life. I mean, who cares if it's true? as long as it works. You know, in American Christianity, so often the real issue is not whether the claims of Christ are valid. It seems to make no difference, really, whether or not Jesus is somehow both man and God, that he was born of the Virgin Mary, that he suffered under Pontius Pilate. Somehow that doesn't matter, it seems. Because if you're attracted to Christianity because you want your best life now, then who really cares if Jesus rose from the dead? For so many of us, the important issue is, does Christianity work for me? What people want to know is this. If I profess faith in Jesus, will he alleviate my problems? So the pertinent question is, does it work instead of, is it true? And so here's what happens. I have a friend, very nice guy, who I'd known for a number of years before he told me that he was a graduate of Multnomah School of the Bible right here in Portland. I was surprised because I knew that he rarely, if ever, went to church. I asked him about that and he explained. Yeah, I used to be a Christian, but I eventually just stepped out of all of that. I pressed him a little and he told me that he'd become a Christian in high school through the Young Life Organization. After high school, he decided to spend a couple years at Multnomah getting the equivalent of an associate's degree in biblical studies. Just as he was finishing the program, a series of life crises hit him. A romance went sour. His parents got divorced. And there were other things also. And in the midst of all these life disappointments, he decided that faith in Christ wasn't giving him what he was looking for. As he put it, it just didn't work for me. I know it works for some people, but it just didn't work for me. I hate to admit this, but often I do the same thing. I value my Christian faith based on whether or not it works for me. And you know, honestly, often it doesn't work for us. Not from our perspective. Loved ones die, or we're afflicted with a terrible disease. We suffer failure and disappointment. Life can be terribly difficult. It happens to the best of us. You know, it even happened to people like John the Baptist, who was thrown into prison and then executed. Jesus called him the greatest man ever born. Or St. Paul, who wrote a good part of the New Testament. 
He was imprisoned, beaten, and tortured, and finally beheaded in Rome. You look at what happened to those guys, and it's pretty clear that neither John the Baptist nor St. Paul were living their best lives now. Maybe their faith wasn't working for them. I don't know. But I do know this. When these great men of God faced horrific circumstances, Christ never failed them, even as they were murdered. Nor will Christ ever fail you. That's the truth. When Jesus prayed for us in John 17, he didn't pray that faith in him would alleviate suffering. He prayed that we'd know the truth about him. He prayed that we'd understand and believe in the authority of Jesus so we can believe that what Jesus said in scripture is straight from God. He prayed that we'd have faith that he had the power to give even sinners like us eternal life. And in his prayer, Jesus made clear the truth of his divinity, the truth that he was somehow both true man and true God. By the way, that's a truth that's hard to swallow for a lot of people. It's a real controversy. The outrageous fact that God came down from heaven and invaded our world to die for us. How can God die? One of our images this morning is a piece of graffiti from ancient Rome. It's intended to mock a Christian named Alex Menos. It depicts Jesus with the head of a donkey nailed to a cross and the words say, Alexa Menos worships his God. Those who would mock Alexa Menos have a point. The idea that the God of the universe would come down to us in human form and then die as an atoning sacrifice for our sins is absolutely outrageous. But to Alexa Manus and to us, the truth has been revealed. The truth is that God so loves you, you who are sinful, that he sent his only son to die as your substitute to take the punishment you deserve. Believing and understanding that, that's the hallmark of a Christian. A Christian is not a person who clings to the idea that God exists to advance your own personal agenda of health, wealth, or happiness. Nor is a Christian a person who prides herself or himself on keeping all the rules. In fact, a Christian is not a person who clings to the idea that God exists to advance your own personal agenda of health, wealth, or happiness. Nor is a Christian one who prides himself on keeping all the rules. In fact, a Christian recognizes his or her failures and throws himself on the mercy of Jesus. Listen to St. Paul in Romans 7, who said, The good I want to do, I don't do. And the evil I don't want to do, that's what I keep on doing. What a wretch! Who will rescue me? Thanks be to Christ. Lutheran theologian Rod Rosenblatt said this, The language of Christianity is the language of substitution. It's not primarily the language of morals. God is not presented as a mother saying, eat all your vegetables. Instead, Christianity is about a one-sided rescue that we didn't ask for or deserve. In John 17, Jesus prayed that we'd know the truth and the truth of Christianity is articulated in the words of scripture and evidenced in the historical events surrounding the life of Jesus, culminating in his resurrection. So here's some truth. Jesus died for you, sinners whose faith often fails. But even when you are faithless, God is faithful and forgiving toward you. 
Jesus died for sinners like us, trapped in behavior you can't seem to extract yourself from. But when the rest of the world is condemning you, Jesus is merciful and forgiving. Jesus died for sinners like you who've really blown it. Sinners whose addictions or anger or hatred have led you to a dark and lonely place. But to you, Jesus brings peace and light and forgiveness. In fact, Jesus imputes to you, Jesus credits to your account his own perfect righteousness. You have no righteousness of your own, so Jesus gives you his. Read Romans 5. Jesus died for you who are mourning, whose sense of loss and sadness is overwhelming. But Jesus offers you comfort and hope and forgiveness. Jesus died for you who fear the future, who regret the, the past, who need a friend, who long for another chance. Jesus died for you. That's the truth. Jesus died for you and you are forgiven and loved. One more truth this season of Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's take a few minutes this uh, seventh Sunday in the season of Easter and this Memorial Day weekend to pray. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love and compassion and mercy toward us, your people. Lord, help us to respond to your love for us by loving you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving each other and all our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, on this Memorial Day weekend, we thank you for uh, your mercy and compassion toward our loved ones uh, who gave their lives in service to our country. Um, Lord, we ask that you continue to comfort those families who lost sons and husbands and fathers and uncles and aunts and sisters and, and moms who lost them uh, in conflict and war. Lord, please uh, continually assure those who have lost a loved one that the sacrifice their loved one made, uh, you saw and uh, Lord, in your mercy and compassion, uh, we ask that you just comfort those who have lost a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we also pray uh, on this Memorial Day weekend that you would bless the world with peace, that you would stop conflict and war and comfort those 
who are affected by it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we also pray for those in our congregation and in our community who are sick. Uh, and Lord, it, uh, that includes Ted Lutz and Kurt Bumcrot and Ken Peterson and Sharon Sirkirka and Lloyd Davis. Lord, please be with those who are ill and recovering. Lord, we also uh, pray for Tatum Lutz and Harry Griffin, two children, four and five years old, uh, battling cancer. Lord, we also pray for those who are afflicted with the coronavirus. And Lord, we ask for your mercy and your, your compassion uh, toward those people who are sick. Lord, we also pray for those who are struggling financially as a result of this pandemic. And uh, we pray for those who have lost their jobs and ask that you provide for them and, uh, and be with them during this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we also pray for the medical professionals that are helping those who are sick and responding uh, to those who are in need, sometimes at the risk of their own lives. Lord, we pray for all the doctors and nurses and medical personnel out there uh, battling this disease. We pray particularly uh, for Shannon on the East Coast, Stephen Lynn's daughter. Lord, please be with her and with Lynn, who, who is a nurse also. Lord, for other nurses and doctors uh, in, in our area and, and dentists, Lord, please be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we thank you for your great love for us, for your compassion for us. And uh, Lord, we thank you that we can be confident that our lives are in your hands and that someday we will be with you in heaven. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. To conclude, we pray in the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Thanks again for joining us this seventh Sunday in the season of Easter and this Memorial Day weekend. There's one more thing I have to say, and that's this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning, Steam. Oh, hey, Splash. Uh, is everything okay? You kind of look sad. Well, yeah, I am sad. You see, I think my dog ran away. Oh, no. What happened? Well, I went out to go check on him this morning, and he wasn't in his doghouse. Then I looked at the gate, and it was slightly open. I think he ran away. Oh, no. Uh, well, what was his name? His name was McGiggles. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hey, here's an idea. Have you tried posting online about it? You know, that, that way your neighbors can keep a lookout for him and let them know uh, when they find him. Oh, I have not done that. That's a great idea. Thank you. All right. I just got up this morning to find my dog missing. If any of you have seen him, please let me know. Oh, hey, you should put a uh, post of a picture. That way people know what he looks like. Oh, that's a good idea. All right, there we go. Now we just have to wait around to see if anybody has seen him. Oh. Looks like someone commented. Let's see what they said. They said, um, thoughts and prayers. Wait, Splash, you typed that. Oh, uh, yeah. What? Why? You're right here. Well, I just wanted to let you know that you're going to be in my thoughts and prayers. Uh, what? So, what, is it, what do you mean? I, that you're going to pray for me? Well, well I, I mean, eventually. I'm not right now. You know, it's just what people say when something sad or bad happens. Hey, Steen, I was just in the other room and I saw online where your dog is missing. I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do to help? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Georgie. I'm glad you're willing to help. All Splash did was type thoughts and prayers. He, he even said that he wasn't really going to pray for me. Hey, now, I help. It was my idea that you should put it online. And also, people say thoughts and prayers all the time. It's nice when people say that. It means they care. Well, it would have been nicer if you actually helped. Yeah, you know, Splash, you really should pray for other people, not just say that you're going to. Well, what, what, what's the difference? Well, we learn in the Bible that um, prayers are a way of connecting to God. Hmm. And there's power in prayer, and we can use our prayer to give thanks and to ask for help for ourselves and other people. Just saying that we're going to pray isn't the same as actually praying. But does it actually do anything? Sure it does. You know that Jesus even prayed to God. Oh, he did? Oh, sure he did. Here in John chapter 17, we can even read about a prayer that Jesus had with God. Well, what, what did he pray about? Well, he prayed about several things. Um, but one of the things he prayed about was protection for his disciples. Protection? Oh, were, were his disciples lost like my dog? Yeah. Um, sort of. You see, this is right before Jesus was going to die on, get arrested, be arrested, and die on the cross. And he was worried 
for his disciples because he thought that maybe they would feel lost in the world without him. And so Jesus asked God to protect his disciples once he died. Well, uh, did God listen? Um, yeah, God always hears our prayers. Oh, wow. I didn't realize how important prayer was. I didn't know that Jesus prayed in times of trouble, too, mm -hmm. and that God listens to all our prayers. Yeah, I, I didn't either. In fact, if it's okay, I would really like to pray right now. Okay, why don't you say the prayer? And just tell God what's on your heart. Oh, oh okay. Um, Dear God, thank you for my dog, McGiggles. I'm really worried about him. I know that Jesus asked for protection, so I am asking you to protect my dog and help him find his way home. Amen. Good job, Steve. You know, that was a really nice prayer. Hey, you know, I think I'm going to start praying more often, but also I feel like we should do more than just pray. I'm going to go help you find your dog. <gasps> really? Yeah, uh, let's go where we, we where you lost seeing him. That's a great idea. Oh, wow. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah, let's go find my dog. <laughs>